Hi friends, Robin here from Cheese From Scratch. So I have something disgusting to show you. And it's very educational. I'm excited to show it to you. So let's look at this disgusting thing that I have to show you um, as I make dinner. <laughs> So I have something to show you that is purely due to my neglect and so I'm going to be showing you guys um, what I should have done and what I did instead and what can happen when you leave your brine out on the counter. So let's take a peek. <laughs> Alright, so it's been such a crazy day. We were shipping cows today. Um, this has nothing to do with my brine being moldy. <laughs> Oh, oh, I slipped it out. This has nothing to do with my brand gone bad. Yeah, anyways, it was a crazy day. But my plan this year is to, like, advance our homestead without spending any money. So that's, like, the thing that I've... Uh, so that's, like, the thing I've got going on this year, is where I'm trying to advance our homestead, but use what we have. Um, so, like, I really would like some flowers, because flowers are nice, and I've never put any of my energy into growing flowers. I've always put my energy into growing food. Um, so, like, this year, my plan is to, like, just divide plants that I already have around, um, and so I, like, I was just, like, digging up plants all over the place, all over the property today, and repotting, putting them places. Um, so anyways, that was what I was up to this morning. And now, I come in, I'm making dinner, I'm a little bit behind, and I open up my brine bucket, and it is moldy. Um, so this is not the hugest deal in the world, but I forgot it out on the counter, like probably about a week ago. Um, so brines do need to be taken care of. And then what I'm talking about here is a 20, an 18 to a 20% brine. So this is the type of brine that you're going to make like a pressed cheese and you're going to put that cheese in this brine for a certain amount of time. It's going to get salted and then you're going to take it out. This isn't the type of brine that, um, like say for feta, where it's like 7 to 10% where you're going to leave it in the fridge and that cheese is going to stay in that brine for it. Entire life. No, this is the type where you're just salting one cheese, and then you are, um, then you're using it for other cheeses. So a brine can last so long, like they can last like up to a year. This one, this is why I'm a little bit sad about this one. This one's like six months old, which I think is pretty good for myself because usually I ruin them before that. Um, but as long as you take care of them, they will last you a very long time. So now I'm gonna start stop um, beating around the bush here clear spot and show you this poor moldy brine that was kind of old, like six months like I said, that I had kind of nur nurtured along that I left out and let go moldy. So let's show you what a moldy brine looks like. Dun, da, 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 da. It's got good mold on top of it though. I'm pretty sure that's like geotrichium, cadidium. Um, so it's good mold. It's just that it went moldy. So um, there's a couple things. So you can rescue a brine if you're so inclined. Um, I'm just going to toss this. But if it wasn't too bad, if you just had a little bit of mold spots on it, you can rescue a brine. Um, what you have to do in that case is um, just put it in the, st on the in a pot on the stove, bring it to boiling, hold it at boiling for, um, I don't know. I'm really random about it. So hold it at boiling for a little while. Um, that will kill everything in there. And then I'm going to put the actual amount of time that you're supposed to do. Usually I'm like, hold it at a rolling boil for like, uh, until you're done doing the dishes. I don't know. Um, and then you go and um, let it cool and then it's good to go again. So, a brine will last you a very long time if you take care of it. That is the key word. A brine needs to be taken care of, and it will give you many, many, many cheeses. But you have to make sure that you replenish the salt in it. You have to make sure that you store it in a nice, cool area, unlike what I did there. This one is probably 100% fine. Like, if I was to scoop off that mold and boil it and then resalt it, it would be fine. So another thing that I worry about with brands that have been contaminated um, are that they can get yeast contamination in them. So if you don't care for a brand properly, if you um, let the salts 
um, kind of diminish too much. You leave it at a warmer temperature for too long. Basically, it can start to ferment and turn to kind of alcohol. And yeast loves alcohol. So I've had um, yeast contaminations that have pinned down to my brine before. So I'm pretty stringent about taking good care of my brine. And if I feel like it's maybe a little bit contaminated, I just start a new one. Because they're not that hard to start. All it is is five parts water to one part fine ground salt. Usually in recipes you're going to find 18% brines. I bump that up to 20 because who has the math in their head to be able to do an 18% brine um, at home? That's a, that's a commercial thing if I've ever heard of one. So 20% brine is five parts water to one part fine ground salt. And the reason that you don't have to go by weight there is because fine ground salt weighs the same as water. So that just makes it super simple. Say you have five quarts of water that you put in there, you put one quart of salt. And you see that they take a lot of salt in it, so that's really a good thing why they last so much longer. So when I replenish a brine, because I talked about how you have to replenish the brine afterwards, typically I'll put a couple tablespoons of salt back into the brine. Um, you've got a little bit of give because I said um, that usually they're typically about 18% brines, but I'm making a 20, so I've got a little bit of a give. Um, but I typically put a couple tablespoons of salt back into the brine after every use. If you forgot to put salt in, because that happens, Hi. Because that happens all the Hi. time. I do it Hi, so mommy. much. Um, so if you like have you used it, used it, used it, and you're like, when the heck was the last time I put salt in there? You can actually float an egg in it. So um, I have a little trick. I'll show it here. So if it floats an egg, it's um, it's 20%. You're good. If it's like a little bit, the egg is kind of like sinking, and I must say that you have to use a fresh egg here because if you're like like it's gonna float a little bit anyways. <laughs> Don't use that egg. Use a fresh egg. So, you've got your egg in there. If it floats right to the top, you're probably about a 20%. If it floats like a little bit underneath, add a couple tablespoons of salt until it pops up to the top. And so this is a, like a really unscientific good way that I just see if I've got enough salt in there. Because it does happen where you're like, when the heck was the last time I salted? I like replenished this brine. Um, time gets away on you. So, those are the ways that I take care of a brine, making sure that I keep it in the fridge, making sure that I replenish it. I will keep a cheese, like if I pull it out, I will salt a cheese in it on the counter and then I'll put it back in the in the fridge. If it's been a couple of days where I've left it out on the counter, that may be where you want to bring that boiling technique in, where you put it in the pot, you bring it to a boiling point, and you hold it there for a little bit to kill any bacteria or yeast that have kind of taken hold in it. Do you think, what, do you, what else should I talk about? We, we should we should get the the more bumptious cow though. That that really mean. The room. What are you doing, Josh? Already, already a cow, um, a cow knocked off a gate and, and, um, and that when we got into the trailer, and, um, and we, and we got some of this into heaven, and, but uh, we're taking out the wow, guys. Oh, wow. Here comes, here comes wow, wow, guys. Big job. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's everything. This is a really informal video. I'm just making it while I'm making dinner. Um, so I didn't have like a set plan of what I wanted to talk to you guys about other than I just wanted to show you this moldy brine um, and tell you how to make one and tell you how to rescue one and tell you how to take care of one. Um, but yeah. So brines are good. Um, so surface salting, so surface salting, you've probably seen me in some videos do surface salting. So for me, surface salting and brining are interchangeable. So when I surface salt the cheese, and I'll, maybe I'll do a video on surface salting one day. Um, I talk about it in my homestead cheese making one on one course. I do a lot of surface salting in my cheese making because I'm not very good at taking care of brines. I let this happen a lot. <laughs> I forget how much salt I put in. Like I just don't find like I'm good at keeping brines. And another big thing about brines, and this has turned into like a little rant about why I don't like brines, but another big thing about brines is that out of sight, out of mind. If I put a cheese in there, lots of times I forget a cheese in there. And like I've left cheese in there for days and there's no rescuing a cheese once you've left it in there for days. Sometimes if you leave it there a little bit long, you can try and soak it in milk and that will extract some of the salt. But if it's like been 
just soaking in there for days, you're actually going to start to extract the calcium. It's going to get really slimy. Um, yeah, I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about, um, other than I use brining and surface salting interchangeably. They both actually put the same amount of salt into the cheese. And a lot of people don't really know this when they start to make cheese. They're like, well, this harder cheese needs, like... 20 hours in the brine, but the softer cheese needs only 10 hours in the brine, like, this one gets more salt, is that why it's, like, drier and stuff? No, that's not why it's drier, it's because it's so much denser that it takes so much more time for that salt to actually penetrate into the center, so that's why it's in there longer, it's not that it's getting more salt, it's that it's taking longer for that salt to seep in. Okay, just out of curiosity, I want to try and float an egg in here and see where we're at. Okay. So, well, it's shallow, um, but this is definitely not enough um, salt. So when I put the egg in there, it floats, but it doesn't float straight to the top, so I would have needed to add more salt into this brine, quite a bit more salt. Um, yeah, I think this is just an uncared for brine that I've forgotten. Forgotten. Poor little thing. But these, this mold is nice. I could save some of that mold and put it on something. Yeah, that's a nice growth. Mm, nice. I know I said that it was gross, but I think it's so beautiful. I love white mold. <laughs> If you guys are new here, subscribe to my channel. I put out a new video every Monday. Um, cheese making, milk cows, dairy, all things homestead cheese making. So I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!